I think I just found one of the best AI software engineers that could revolutionize your code base with deep context understanding and powerful code generation. Allow me to introduce Century Seer, an AI debugging agent built to find, analyze, and fix issues automatically using Century's unmatched depth of context. With error handling, you have error descriptions, stack traces, tracing data, log, performance metrics, and even your entire code base. With Seer, you can automatically detect actionable issues, score their flexibility, and get instant context for faster triage. You can perform deep root cause analysis where you can generate code fixes with unit tests and open GitHub PRs even across multiple repos and distributed systems. Now to deploy Seer into your code base, you're going to need to go ahead over to Century Seer website, which I'll leave a link to in the description below and go ahead and create an account completely for free. You also have the ability to use the MCP server, which I'll also showcase a little while later into the video, which is where you're going to be able to use Seer's capabilities to have it so that it can fix various issues by deploying agents. And it's also able to scan and automatically find issues and fix it all on its own. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis. So this is where you can easily get up to date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. Also, just a quick note, Seer is actually part of Sentry, which you probably have heard about. This is a default monitoring tool for live projects that help you track as well as understand the bugs and errors that you may be facing with your code base. Seer uses all the context, which makes debugging way smarter, much better than just dumping issues into Claude or a cursor without context. After signing up or logging in, you're going to be then sent over to the main dashboard of Sentry. And first things first is setting up the Sentry SDK for your JavaScript or whatever project you have. In this case, if it's not a JavaScript project, you can go ahead and click on add project and there's a list of different templates that you can easily integrate and create a new project with. So this is a three-step process. You first select your platform, set up the alert frequency, and then name the project. And then you can get started by initializing it from the last screen. So I have this task manager demo app, and this is where I want Sentry to actually find and fix all the issues that I have, like fail to load the user profile, and there's a couple of API issues that I have within this next.js app. So now what we can do is run the Sentry wizard to our framework that we have created. So this is by simply going ahead and copying this automatic configuration and then going into the command, the terminal, the command prompt, and going into the actual Sentry demo app that we have created and pasting in this command so that it's able to then configure our app automatically by running this Sentry wizard. This will take a couple of seconds, but once you have set this up, we'll then proceed with the next step. And after you have configured the actual setup wizard, you can then verify by starting up your deployment server and you can visit the actual Sentry example page. This is where you want to go to your local host and type in slash Sentry dash example dash page, which will take you to this and it will ask you to throw a sample error. And you can see that it has then given us this issue over here. And if we are to go back, you can see that we can take me to my error and then it's going to be able to be visualized live over here within our actual century log. But to go back into our task manager demo app, you can see that there's many components that are not actually functioning or just simply don't look appealing. For example, this is our demo app and you can see there's already a couple of different errors like failing to fetch tasks, fail to actually fetch the task API, which you can see at the bottom. And next.js also recognizes all the different console errors that it's also finding. Now, well, in this case, if I'm going ahead and creating a UI, giving it a different priority, and if I'm to add the task, it's not actually adding any sort of task over here. And you can see that it reports another issue. This is another issue where the direct state mutation directed in add task, the task array modified directly, and it's not actually shown. But now if I am to go back into the world of AI issue log, 
it's going to be able to then showcase all the different issues that are being reported live in action thanks to the sentry wizard that we had configured but another thing you can do is manage your errors as well as your outages the breach metrics warnings user feedback as well as getting a live visualization of what's happening in your app now you also have it so that within the main dashboard you can manage different sorts of general templates you can have it so that you can connect your front end and get a live visualization of what is happening as well as with the back end and a mobile view you can even go into the explore page and this is where you're going to be able to manage your traces of what's happening in your actual app the logs as well as discovering profiles replays where you'll see all the live sessions of what went wrong or what you can do to actually fix that particular error live in action but we don't even need to do that because if we go back into issues you can see that there is a direct state mutation error and if we go into this error you can see that sentry does a deep research on finding what that particular error is and you can find the root cause by clicking on this button which will enable Sir to work on tackling that task for us What's nice is that you can even have it integrated with GitHub so that you can put in PR requests directly to GitHub with Seer. So I'm going to simply go ahead and set this up. So that way it would be easier to work and showcase the different changes. Most importantly, make sure you have your repository added to GitHub. So I've gone along and added the Sentry demo app to GitHub. And what I'm going to do now is go into the issue that I want to fix, find the root cause with Seer, and I have picked the repository that I want to work in, which is this JavaScript next.js Sentry demo app. And once that is done, I can enable automation so that Seer is able to work within that app and it's going to be able to autonomously go ahead and fix any sort of issue that it wants. You can have different sorts of uh, moderations of auto triggers. In this case, I'm going to have it fix all the issues autonomously and I can set it up for all of my different projects that I have. Then all I gotta do is have it so that I can start Seer, which is gonna ingest all the contents that it found from that issue and do a deep research to figure out different ways to debug it. And right away, you can see that it is figuring out the root cause and it will also provide me a solution to fix that. Then it's gonna be able to make the correct commit and then publish that PR to GitHub autonomously without me doing anything. And there we go. It looks like it has found the root cause. The add task function directly mutated the task array using array.push. And it's violating the React's immutable state principle. And right now we have a solution on the bottom, which we can simply click on coded up. And it's going to be able to fix that issue and implement the changes directly to our code base, which is just impressive. Once that is done, you can also have it published as a PR so that you can then access it within GitHub itself. Looks like the code changes have been made. And if we go to the bottom, you can see the diff edit that fixes this particular issue. Now you can check this out locally or you can draft a PR. I simply went ahead and drafted the PR and we can now view the PR within our repository. And this is the fix that it was able to publish onto the repository within the pull request tab. This is the capability of Seer, and you can see how easy it is in terms of debugging your overall code base. Now, the MCP I was talking about works with different coding agents, and essentially, it does exactly what I did, but directs the coding agent to work with Sentry itself, where it can access the issues within the actual coding agent, search for different errors in specific files, query projects, and to set it up, it's super simple. Just go ahead and provide the OAuth within the JSON file of your MCP file. And this is where you're gonna be able to enable the actual MCP so that it can work with whatever database that you wanna have debugged. The thing is, Sir was able to find so many issues with my app. So what I've done is gone into the settings and then I went into Sir automation. This is where I have selected my repository and within this repo, I have it so that it's set on auto trigger fixes where it fixes all the different issues with Sears AI agent. And it's also going to be able to deploy the pull request for each issue rather than me going ahead and viewing it. This is just my preference. You can set it to whatever you would like. But 
Now, if we are to go back into the issues and click on something like the century example front end error, if I click on this, you can see that century seer has already gone along and find the solution and it's going to be able to then be coded up. And if I am to click on this, it's going to then autonomously send in the pull request for me and deploy it to my GitHub repo. So in the same manner, Seer has already gone along and fixed all of these different issues. So now let's actually take a look at our app and, and see how it actually looks. And just look at that. This is our new task management app that was able to be fully configured to be working based off of all the different errors that we faced. Now we have the ability to actually add in a task with different priorities. And if I click on create, you can see that it actually added this. There's a functional task list and it also showcases a live visualization within the statistics tab. This is the capability of Seer, how you can easily go ahead and autonomously debug your code. You would get way better results than what we did for a simple app like ours. But that's basically it guys for today's video on Century Seer. This is how you can deploy this AI software engineer to fully debug your code and help you ship code faster. I'll leave all these links in the description below so that you can easily get started. But with that thought guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the second channel, join the newsletter as well as join the discord, follow me on Twitter. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos because there's a lot of content that you will truly benefit from. But with that thought guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out fellas.